Essentially, what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to create a layer mask that hides this blown out portion but reveals the darker parts in this exposure so that the sky from the lower layer blends with the foreground from the upper layer. Okay, that's the goal. That's what we're trying to achieve. Now, there are a million different ways of doing this. But there's one which is particularly useful if you're trying to blend two images based on the brightness of their pixels. And that is, that's exactly what we're trying to do here. That's the essence of HDR, of manual blending for manual exposure blending for increasing the dynamic range of your images. We want to create a mask that reveals the bottom and hides the top, hides the sky, the bright part. And the best way to do this is to go to the channels palette and actually I'm going to disable this part, this brighter uh, layer here. Um, I'm going to the channels palette and there you have, if you're working with an R RGB image, which you usually are unless you, you change the mode uh, explicitly, you have the RGB channel here, so that's the color image that you usually see, and then you have the red, green and blue channel, which gives you different masks revealing the different colors spoken very coarsely, of course, very, in, very simplified. If you click on any of those ch uh, um, channels, now don't click on the image icon, click right beside the, the layer name, Photoshop is going to show you that particular mask. And what I'm trying to do here is pick or find the channel that gives me the best contrast between the foreground and the sky in this uh, image. I'm going from red to green to blue, and I think the blue one is the best because it's got an, ev an almost evenly gray sky and a very, very dark foreground with those trees. So it, it will allow me to separate those two regions very nicely. What I'm doing now is I'm holding down the control or command key on my keyboard and I'm clicking on this icon. This time you need to click on the icon itself, on the image icon. You will see the, the marching ants, ants, which means that Photoshop has now created a selection from that mask. What you see here are alpha channels, but they're the same as layer masks. And you can go back and forth between selections and layer masks uh, in a very simple way. To, to turn a layer mask into a selection, just control click or command click on the layer mask icon. So now I'm going to enable the RGB channel again, and then I'm going back to the layers uh, palette here. And what I'm doing will make sense in a minute, but let me just do some things here. I'm going to put this upper layer into a group. And with this group selected, I'm coming down here to this add layer mask icon below the layer uh, palette, and I'm holding down the Option or Alt key and clicking on that icon. Now, what that does is by clicking on the icon, I turn the selection into a layer mask. And by holding down the Alt or Option key on my keyboard, I invert that mask in the process of doing that. So as you see, before that, in the layers, uh, in the channels palette, the trees were dark and the sky was bright. Now it's the other way around. The, the sky is dark and the trees are bright. Okay, that's the trick with this option key. It just inverts everything in, if you're creating a, a layer mask from a, from a selection. Now at that point, we already have the first uh, mask that blends these two sections of the image together. But it does so in a very crude and not in a very appealing way. If I disable this mask, you can see that the lower part gets brighter because the mask is virtually um, white in those areas, so it reveals those pixels. Up here, it hides some of the blown out portions. So if I disable this, I have the lower mask only, the lower, lower image only. And if I disable the, the layer mask by shift clicking on it, you see that this blown out sky comes back. So this, so now I only see the upper layer. So it's already 
a way of blending these two images, but it's not a very good one because we still lose a lot of contrast, color and details in the sky by doing so. Now the next step in the process is to actually work some more on this layer mask that we've just created. And to do so, I'm holding down the Alt key and click on the layer mask. And that shows me only the layer mask in the image preview, okay? Now, don't worry, nothing has happened to your image. It's just changed the view from the image to the layer mask. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change this layer mask by applying a levels adjustment. And you can do this, you can apply a, a, a levels adjustment by clicking or by pressing Control L or Command L on your keyboard, not only to an image layer, but also to a, a layer mask, as you've seen. And what I'm doing now is I'm trying to make this mask, bring this mask as close to black and white as possible. And to do this, I'm first bringing in the black point for all the way from the right side. And when I do this, you can see that the sky gradually turns uh, black, it turns darker and darker. And I'm doing this up to a point where I see that the, the sky just next to this tree line up here is black, essentially. I don't care about those few clouds here. I could drive them to, to black also with this layer, with this levels adjustment. But in doing so, I'm going to make the transition between these trees and the sky worse in the mask. So I need some room there for a nice smooth transition between the treetops and the sky. So that's why I'm stopping right here. I, I can take care easily of this part with a brush later on. And I'm going to also raise the white point to give some more thickness to this white part of the, of the mask here. And I think we're doing fine here. That's what we wanted to achieve. Now I'm going to grab the brush tool by pressing B on my uh, keyboard, raise the flow value to 100% and change the foreground color to black. I do this by pressing D to make the foreground background color the default, white and black, and then X to switch them. And that makes the foreground color black. And when I do this, you can see that I can easily paint on these clouds to bring them to black and I'm going to go into the middle here. Oops. Let me just zoom to 100%. No, that's not 100%. That's 100%. And uh, I'm going to make my brush smaller. By the way, the opacity should also be 100% when you do this. And then I'm going to go into these uh, areas here and remove these parts which are very close to the to the edge of the mask. I'm going to switch to white as a foreground color and do the same thing to the edge on the white side of the mask. Okay, so let me zoom back out. Okay, so I think everything up there is black, everything up he down here is white. And um, I think I'm going to, I may be I need, maybe I need this part of the mask later on for another step. So I'm just going to save this for later. And the way I'm doing this is create a group and actually create another group inside that group. Hold down the Alt key and drag the layer to this new group and then close it. It's, it's just out of sight. I just saved it. It is there for uh, when I need it later on but it doesn't disturb me anymore. And now that I've done this, I am actually making this whole bottom part white too, because for now, that's all we need. A mask that separates the sky from the foreground so that we can um, hide and reveal the, the specific sections of the images. Now you can see that we have a very hard blend between those two areas. The sky part is there 100% because we hide the blown out sky in this layer. So the sky actually doesn't change if I disable this, this group now. And we have the foreground 100% being taken from this brighter exposure. And you can see that this doesn't really look nice because right here where the treetops are, you can see that the, the backlight actually overpowered those small, tiny twigs in, this, in these treetops. And we've got a, a very 
ugly looking bright kind of halo artifact in this in this area so that would be the straightforward way to go to go with uh, luminosity mass but to make it actually believable and to create a very good looking uh, manual blend uh, there is one other thing to do and that is i'm going to create a black layer mask on this layer here and um, let me explain why I'm doing this. What you see now here is a group with a layer inside and both have a mask. And what happens now is that only the pixels of this layer are going to be visible in parts where none of these two masks is black. Okay? So wherever one of those masks is black, the pixels are going to be hidden. So essentially, the effective mass that's going to sh let this layer shine through is an intersection of those two masks that we have here. And that means, in very simple terms, let's look at this layer mask here on the group, wherever we have a black pixel, so everywhere in the sky, nothing's going to be shining through, no matter what I do to this mask down here, okay? That's the important thing. So essentially, the upper mask on the group is protecting what I'm uh, about to do uh, with the other layer mask. It's keeping anything from affecting the sky. And we're going to see what that is in a minute. My goal now is to gradually reveal the brighter layer, the foreground in the sprighter uh, image layer, uh, by using the brush and gently brushing across these areas, okay? So to do this, I'm going to activate this mask by clicking on it. I'm selecting the brush tool, white as a foreground layer, and I choose a very, very low flow value of 1%. That's the minimum value that you can choose as a flow value. And I'm doing this because the, this gives me very, very fine control over the way in which I am applying the white paint to this um, layer mask in a, in a second. Uh, the flow value actually um, a very flow value means that you have to brush a, a across the same region many times in order to apply the full effect. So to make it full white, I would have to brush a lot of times ac um, across the same set of pixels. Okay, So only a very small uh, amount of white paint is applied every time I brush. And that's exactly what I want. So with the white brush, make that bigger, make it Make it about the size of those uh, tree tops that range into the sky. I think that's a good size in this case. And with this brush and the layer mask uh, enabled here, I'm just going to start painting on those tree tops. And you can see that very slowly those tree tops are brightened. They come back into the equation, into the image. Okay, and so what happens here is, even though I'm being quite sloppy, let me show you this mask, it isn't confined to the treetops in any way, so I'm being very sloppy about the way I'm painting here. But since we have this protective mask on top, anything that shines through due to the sloppiness is just hidden by that upper mask. Now let me show you when I disable this mask, you can see that immediately we, we get a halo, which is an effect of the sloppiness that I've been uh, applying here to this uh, while I was brushing. And only through this upper mask, we have a very precise protection of the sky here so that we don't get any, any haloing. So let me just move on here and very slowly bring those areas into the image so that I don't get those artifacts that we've had before. I'm going to go slowly downwards and reveal those areas. And once you are, you've come down a little bit from the tree, tree tops and you're not painting on the, on the tree tr tops in this example uh, directly, you can raise your flow to let's say, let, let's say 3%, okay? It's still extremely low but you don't have to brush over those areas here as often as you would if you left it at 1% flow value. So and now 
I can just paint in those those parts to let this darker part of the image shine through. Okay? Now where you have to be careful with brushing are those treetops. Don't brush too much because if you brush too much they're going to be too bright and they're going to show those same artifacts that you've seen before. Just by blending them in very gradually, very carefully into the into the sky, you can you manage to stop at the very point where it's bright enough but not too bright. Okay? That's exactly what I'm trying to do here.